my name is Jacqueline Chan, and I am a second year here at UC San Diego. Um, I'm a visual arts major, and I'm here on behalf of the BioClock Studio to interview Dr. Carrie Parch. So I got into biology because I was always a curious person. Um, when I was younger, I was actually curious in, in things outside the scientific world. I was very interested in um, our political arena, and so when I was in high school, I was in debate club, and um, I was always trying to uh, sort of expand my horizons in that way. Um, and when I went to college, I was an undergraduate at the University of Washington, uh, and I started taking chemistry courses and fell in love with the physical world. Right? And so um, it really spurred me on to uh, major in biochemistry, um, and then I, I worked in a lab for several years where I did a lot of experimental biology, um, and that propelled me into graduate school and, and a career in basic science. So I was in my first year as a graduate student. You'll typically rotate amongst different labs and try to find a good home. Uh, and so I entered into graduate school thinking I wanted to do NMR spectroscopy, which is basically the process of taking multiple like sort of MRIs on proteins and, and looking at them in a, um, with a magnifying glass, basically, right? And so uh, I rotated in a few labs and didn't feel like I had a, a good home and felt very lucky that I ended up um, rotating in my last chance in a lab that did some circadian biochemistry. And I just instantly fell in love with the field. Um, one of the things that seems most interesting to me about circadian biology is the fact that it scan, um, spans many time scales and many size scales. So we study very detailed atomistic models of protein structure and dynamics, but we study how they affect a clock that occurs over a 24-hour day. And so we like really bridging that gap um, between very tiny, fast movements of proteins to the very long time scale biochemistry of circadian rhythms. We use NMR spectroscopy because what it really allows us to gain access to is a picture of a protein at every single amino acid resolution, right? So a protein is made up of many individual amino acids that come together to form, you know, one protein fold. And so what we want to do is interrogate what that protein looks like uh, and how it interacts with other proteins in solution, right? And so the, the business of making a clock largely deals with proteins as they interact with one another over the time course of a circadian day. And so for us to understand sort of how the gears of the clock turn, we need to understand how those proteins find one another, how they interact, how long they stay together, and how that might be changed over, over time. And so NMR spectroscopy gives us a great way to look at those interactions um, with sort of a, a fingerprint um, as a function of any different complex that we might want to look at. And so it's important for us in, con in the context of circadian biology um, because right now what we're trying to do is take the excellent foundation that the genetics you know, geneticists have laid out for us in circadian biology and um, take that to a very mechanistic level where we can understand, for example, how a particular mutation that you might inherit might change your clock from 24 hours down to something that runs with an internal time of 21 hours. Right? And so there's been a few really great leads on how just change of one amino acid could have that profound effect on your biology. What we're trying to do with NMR is to put those pieces together to understand how a tiny change might elicit a, a big change in your life. One of the studies that we're working on now studies one very tiny region of one clock protein. So 50 amino acids out of a 625 amino acid protein. And it turns out that this very tiny region um, essentially acts as the site where you have two proteins arm wrestling to interact with it. And when uh, a one protein interacts with this region, it will drive the clock forward. And when the other protein is interacting, it stops the clock. And it's the balance of activities between these two proteins that we think plays uh, an important role in making the 24-hour clock. Uh, and the way that we've tested that is to use our NMR spectroscopy data that shows us at an amino acid by amino acid level what are the key players in mediating these interactions, which then allowed us to go make mutations in these amino acids to sort of perturb it, right? And if we can mess with the system, we can um, gain insight into how important that is. 
Uh, and so using these types of mutants, we were able then to take a clock that normally runs with 24 hours in these cells, um, and we could sort of change the affinity for our two proteins to control moving forward or stopping, and we could shorten the clock to as short as 19 hours or as long as 26 hours by controlling how these two proteins sort of arm wrestle, right? And so um, I would argue that we probably could only gain access to that kind of detailed insight by studying um, this region at that very kind of atom-specific level. It's my understanding that there are almost as many women as men that get PhDs. Um, and really there seems to be uh, a loss of women moving beyond getting a PhD into perhaps tenure-track academic positions. Um, and one of the causes that I think that's attributed to largely is this difficulty in balancing family and work. Um, and so in my case, I can say that my selection of a really supportive spouse, you know, my husband plays a really critical role in my success because we're a team. You know, we raise our family together. But I think for women who are looking, looking to get into this field, the single most important thing is to follow your passion um, for science, for questions, you know, for data, <laughs> if you're addicted to data, um, because it's that kind of passion that will get you through perhaps a difficult stretch, right? Um, if you are challenged or overworked, at the end of the day, if you're happy about what you do, you're excited to go back to work the next day.